likely. Next, I'm going to uh, introduce the uh, results from the yesterday's breakout sessions uh, that we spread into. <laughs> This that I can do. It, I'm so used to that already because it, it has been on me so for all, already so long time. Uh, okay, now it's maybe easier to hear my voice as well. But now I will uh, share the results of the breakout sessions yesterday. We spread in the uh, three groups to think how to improve uh, Helsinki as a cycling city and how the cycling could be even uh, more a part of Helsinki's vitality. Mm. So we had uh, four different topics yesterday. Um, cities vital all year around, and the maintenance of the uh, bike paths during the winter. We know that the share of biking drops quite dramatically uh, in Helsinki during the winter months. So how could that situation be improved? Um, and then how to uh, speed up the development of the best practice cycling infrastructure. Helsing has been uh, doing that quite uh, slowly, but how we can speed up and what are the key things to do in that. And then the, that question was combined also with the, how the bicycles could be uh, merged better with the rail network, because Helsinki aims to be a, a network city of rails. So how bicycling and uh, rail traffic could go better hand in hand. And then uh, the last question was about how to get those people who cycle quite seldom to cycle more frequently. Mm, that 80% of Helsingians own a bicycle uh, and 70% use it at, at least once a week, but how we can get those numbers up. As we know, Helsinki wants to increase the number of uh, cycling, cy uh, biking model share to 20%. So there is still uh, work due in that phase as well. So the first question was about the all year round cycling and the maintenance of the bike paths. Here we still, still see some background information about the situation that it, there is a clear drop with cyclists uh, during the winter months. So something should be done. And we have uh, encouraging uh, examples that when brushing and salting has been done in the uh, bicycle highways, the Barna routes as we call them, here in Helsinki, the number of cyclists has increased uh, quite a lot. So something can be done with the maintenance, that's for sure. And here were the questions what we were thinking about in the group. Uh, about the user needs, of course, it's, uh, the user perspective is, is a clear thing that has to be thought in this topic because the users are, are those who struggle there in the snow. Uh, are there some resources that could be added to the uh, situation mm, that uh, could help people from all ages and abilities to cycle year-round? And uh, also the question that uh, how to convince people that it's smart to put uh, some uh, effort to maintain uh, the, the bike path year round, because that's not clear either. And uh, actually, uh, when we, uh, were the, the discussion was that uh, very people do bike during the winter, so is it worth the investment to put some uh, money to uh, creating the uh, good winter cycling conditions. But then there was discussion that you have to take a look of the vision and strategy that you have uh, with the cycling and think accordingly. And if Helsinki wants to increase the amount of cycling, then investments in this has to be done. Mm. And then uh, the data is a topic that has been touched upon uh, many, many times during this uh, seminar. That there has to be clear dat data on the needs that where the winter maintenance is needed, what are the issues that there are so those things can be improved and the investments can be targeted uh, in the best possible way. And then, of course, communication uh, is super important thing in this, that people know that there are stitches that are brushed and salted, for example. And, and if someday they are not brushed and salted, that also there's a communication 
uh, channels for those people uh, to tell that now it's not done properly. So the communication has to be uh, to both direction from the city to the cyclist and the cyclist to the city. So, mm, so these conditions can be the best possible. And then also one uh, question was better bike parking. Uh, that during the winter, especially if it snows, it's important that uh, the shelters are with a roof or some kind of uh, protection from, from the snow mm, and rain as well. So people can park them. And also this is, uh, has to do with the workplaces as well, that there is places where you can drive your bike inside and leave it there so you don't have to shovel it out from the snow pile after the work day. Uh, and then also it's about resources that more machines are probably needed in order to get the snow out from the uh, ways when, it, when it's needed to get out. And then this was also an uh, interesting topic about norms that was discussed there, that uh, in Amsterdam it's totally okay to come to workplace in Gore-Tex, uh, full Gore-Tex gear, but is it possible here in Helsinki? Uh, maybe somewhere, but maybe the norms are more strict in here because there is not, not the habit of uh, cycling year-round. Mm, so that is also something that needs to be thought of. And then how to adjust uh, people that we uh, need to adjust the maintenance model. Mm, this is not maybe the easiest way that if you have made investments you have to uh, get the bets out of it. Of course it's, it is so, but then it is just pouring money. But I think this is uh, also you can lie on the strategy and say that we have the decision that we have, we will uh, increase the biking. So, and we have put resources into making this uh, best possible infrastructure. So of course it should be used year around and it needs resources and we should uh, put the needed resources into it. And then uh, more discussions and collaboration and communication. And discussions is probably also with the uh, citizen and with the other, uh, other parts of the administration. And then also the collaboration in communication was something that was mentioned, that if the message is said well, with like a bread uh, group of people, that there would be the mayor's office, for example, with that. It would be not only be the uh, city planning or urban environment, maybe the uh, voice would be louder and more clear. And then one thing that, <laughs> why is, is it needed that still, at least now, the snow winters are expected here in, in, in Helsinki. That, uh, for example, we heard in yesterday's panel that uh, Heikki Pursian, an enthusiastic cyclist, said that Last winter was so hard that even he uh, ditched the bike for some time because it was just too much snow on the roads. Uh, so we have those kind of uh, winters still expected. So we need also uh, winter maintenance. Then uh, the second thing was um, about uh, building the network of best practice cycling infrastructure. And here we can see the map where is uh, where is the network, that how, how it would go around the city. And here we can still see the inner city parts, that there is, uh, there is Finnish sections, and there is sections that exist but have to be improved, but then there are those completely new sections that still has to be built. And how to speed up this development uh, was the key question. And also the reasons for the uh, slow development were discussed in the group, that why Helsinki has been lagged behind, and then how it could be sped up, and how to uh, ensure both the quality of the network and then also that it's done quickly enough. That those were the questions for these groups. Mm, and there were uh, pr quite vivid discussion, I think, about these all questions. And they were saying that the normal people, which mean like non-expert people, don't usually maybe know what is the high quality infrastructure, uh, how it differs, is it uh, separated with uh, different levels or is there just paint, for example, in the side of the, mm, of the uh, bike path. People necessarily don't, don't know that, but okay, maybe if there are 
on the bike, they will sense that, but they don't necessarily know. So uh, the motivation is maybe difficult to get from that direction. Mm. And then also a topic has, which has been discussed quite a lot during the seminar, that in a way this process of LiDAR infrastructure change is not known in Helsinki. That Helsinki will al always uh, tear up the whole street and change all the, all the telecommunication and uh, warming and piping and everything at the same time, and it takes uh, many years to do that. So could there be easier ways uh, to renovate the streets for, uh, for cyclists? Those could be needed. Mm. And then what our guests from Amsterdam and Copenhagen has been say saying for us, that progress is slow. It took a very long time to get to start in Copenhagen and in Amsterdam, and it takes time also here. So it's also a normal thing. Uh, that some things happen happens quite slowly, so no need to worry. But of course, we can al always speed up. And here are some tips how to speed up. Mm. First of all, this is also a topic that has been widely discussed: that we need a holistic uh, approach for the urban urban space that we are developing. Thinking about uh, different users all the time when we think about this, and also holistic approach in so that we think about cycling in the all different planning levels and uh, across as administrational uh, units as well. So holistic approach in, in many ways is needed uh, in order to speed the development. And uh, here was the same thing that coordination between different departments and levels of planning. And also, uh, besides money, human resources are needed. This was also pointed out in many discussions that there are the people who make the plans and also the coordination requires resources. So mm, there has to be enough people to make these things happen. And then here was the same thing that maybe the whole, whole street hasn't been renovated at once. Mm, and maybe the construction processes could be lighter. And here was a good point about piloting and testing. Uh, for example, uh, uh, painted lanes could be something that would be worth, worth tested uh, in some places, uh, like quick experimentation. Uh, and also the COVID, COVID has made, in all over the world, some tests has been, experiments has been put up in quite quickly pace. But there's a thing also with experiments that, that they need, requ uh, they require good planning, because if you made a bad, bad experiment, it can uh, make the progress go even to the wrong, wrong direction, that you prove that uh, this is not a good solution, or those who are against those kind of things ha has then a uh, thing against you. So th they have to be done also very well. And also careful monitor that what works, what doesn't work, and then you can learn from those experiments and maybe make them uh, not temporary. And uh, there is the risk, or, or risk, uh, I don't know if it, 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 there is also risk, risky things about the temporary uh, things that they might become permanent, and if they are not the best quality, it can cause pain in the f future as well, if, if uh, something that's made uh, permanent becomes, uh, uh, te made temporary becomes permanent. And I think Helsinki is quite good in making uh, temporary structures, which has become uh, permanent. Mm, so that is something that has to be thought when making this, uh, these uh, pilots. And then, uh, uh, I don't know if I understood this point right, but I think it was a good thing that was mentioned that there is the best practice infrastructure, and then there are the pilots that uh, pilots that are done, and they don't necessarily are the, the same thing. And it's important to uh, separate those in the public discussion. And then this was a good point that was there, that politicians like to see progress during their mandate period. That uh, if you can make something when they are in the power, then they probably will are, are proud of it and want to push that progress even uh, further in the future. And then there was the last question about how to get people uh, who cycle quite seldomly uh, to do that more free, uh, frequently. Mm. And here was also uh, 
three questions that were answered that why do you think uh, people uh, cycle quite uh, rare, rarely compared to the Netherlands and Denmark mm, and how to encourage those people who uh, cycle rarely uh, to use the cycle, uh, bicycle in their everyday lives and how to change the view from cycling uh, from leisure activity or sports to everyday mobility. Uh, then these all questions have been raised also in the presentations. Mm. But first question is, why do you think uh, still relatively few people cycle in Helsinki? And uh, there was clear thing that let's use, uh, we have the data, so let's use that. And the data point has been raised in many discussions mm, during the, these days here. So here are the uh, most important reasons why people cycle seldomly, that other means of transportation are more attractive and old uh, health or age doesn't make it uh, safe, to, to, safe to use uh, the existing infrastructure. And then no bicycle in use and desire for comfort, feeling unsafe in traffic and distances too low, uh, uh, too long. And then, then some uh, things that has been said more seldomly. But uh, so other means are more attractive. It's not easy enough, and then or then you don't feel that you can uh, perform in the uh, surroundings that exist, mm, or they feel unsafe. But how the, we could encourage the people to use bicycle in their everyday lives? Uh, one point was information uh, that people should know how the routes go. For example, that. There are no uh, no digital route uh, router, for example, in Helsinki that would give you the best route. Of course, Google Maps is there, but for example, for the public transportation, we have an ex excellent router application online, and it doesn't anymore provide cycling paths. But also, the physical infrastructure or physical environment should have good information for the cyclists that how the routes go and where you can go, and especially if there are temporary. Uh, temporary routes, they should be marked very clearly. And then also, we said that marketing, marketing and communication uh, for, for example, these different services that would be, and uh, the city bikes, for example, has been done very good marketing that they exist, because not having a bike was a one reason not, not to cycle in Helsinki, so those have been marketed quite well. And also saying for about the winter maintenance, the telling that it exists and where it exists. So communication is, is very important also uh, to get people on the bikes. And this is also that uh, was, was emphasized quite a lot, that better temporary routes for building sites, because it, it is annoying if you cannot cycle. And we had also uh, people from Espo in this group, I attended this group as well, and there, was mentioned that they block the whole whole street at once, not even make some kind of temporary routes, but you have to do quite uh, long detours, and that's not encouraging cycle cycling at all. And then the data point again, utilizing the user data and uh, seeing what are the reasons how we could uh, encourage those people. What are what are the uh, points for improvement that comes from the data? Collaboration uh, with also different, uh, different, uh, not only in the city, but also, for example, with associations, uh, that ho how they could also encourage and give information for, for cyclists. So all, all kind of collaboration, which, is, which we have been seeing also during this seminar, uh, that is very good, nice and good. And then uh, the question, how to change cycling from a leisure activity to everyday mobility. Uh, we were discussing that city bikes has done a lot in this, this thing, that now you can see them and they are part of the uh, trip chain. And you can see from the route wrap, for example, which, uh, which sections of the trip could be done with city bikes. And then the uh, thing was that maybe if they would make, make a year-round uh, system, it would yeah, even more uh, give this thing that it is everyday mobility. That you can do it every day during the year as well, that they, they exist. They have also this very symbolic uh, purpose. And then uh, 
in workplaces, for example, there should be uh, good spaces to store your bike and related equipment. Mm, so it feels like it's, it is mobility that you can do. And then uh, also some room where you can change your cycling clothes away and maybe take a shower if you wish. But we were also th th saying that, do, uh, how, that do, is, is the shower needed or not? But it's also have a symbolic value that it exists that the uh, employee thinks that you, it is possible to take a shower as well if you want. And then uh, we have already today been speaking about children. So the education about uh, transportation is important that you educate uh, young people that how to, uh, for in general how to act in in, trans, uh, in transportation or in traffic. Uh, but also about cycling and why it's good and how, what are the what are the rules in the in traffic, how you use the bike, and so on. So people understand uh, that uh, bicycles are a part of this. And then role mo models are important. I uh, always love when when I see from the Netherlands that the uh, crown prince is on the bike with the suit and everything. That's a very good role model for cycling. That is something that everyone can do. And also, there was an example that uh, Jyväskylä, a city in the center of Finland, has a child cycling mayor, uh, which is elected every year, that, uh, for example, gives um, a everyday mobility, uh, some results of the questionnaire from children to the real mayor and those kind of things, and is, is in the cycling events and so on, and gives a like, uh, good example for, for other children about the cycling. And uh, the that the cycling mayor, the child cycling mayor, also gets a nice bike for the year to use when when it's uh, his or her ter terms. But okay, uh, here were the results uh, from the yesterday's breakout sessions. The discussions were very good, and this was just a uh, quick wrap up of those, and they will be utilized by the Handshake project also in the future. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah, Oscar. Yes, Oscar Kaupimäki, cycling coordinator at the city of Helsinki. Thank you very much for a really informative wrap up of the sessions. There was a lot of information to be put into a short presentation. Did a really good job. A lot of really important information there. Um, I feel a strong need to kind of elaborate on the uh, year-round cycling aspect that was talked about in that group. And one of the other points that was written down was that very, very few people continue to cycle throughout the year. Well, it's relative. Um, we know, I'm going to be a little geeky now, we know that Helsinki has about 650,000 inhabitants. Helsinkians do roughly three, tri three trips a day, so that's about two million trips. And um, we know that the um, cycling model share drops to about a tenth of uh, what it is during a warm season, so to about one to two percent. So if we, if we just assume that's only one percent in the winter, that still means that 20,000 trips are made by bicycles. So relative to the city's population, it's not that many, but it's still 20,000 trips made by a bicycle. I'm mean, going to spread throughout the street network. Uh, it doesn't show up as bicycle rush hours that you see in Amsterdam or Copenhagen, but it's there, and there definitely is a potential to increase that. So that's just something that I really feel that I want to share here. So yeah, relatively few, but it's still a substantial number. Then you mentioned the normalization of year-round cycling, and there was a bullet point about how it's normal to go in your Elikra to work in Amsterdam. Um, that's actually quite contrary to what Gore I... Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex. Sorry, Gore-Tex, yeah. Um, good uh, correction. Um, then again, what we hear and what we see from these countries and these cities in the Netherlands and Denmark is that people most often are rather dressed for the destination and not the journey. And what I hear the attitude in Denmark towards winter cycling, for example, is that, well, you are Nordic, you live in Denmark, right? So you own a jacket, you own gloves, you own winter boots, you own a toque, and the people usually nod. Then so they, they get asked, you want a bicycle? They usually nod. So there you go. That's pretty much all you need. Of course, if your journey to work is over five kilometers, 
uh, 10 kilometers, then of course you do need to pay more attention to gear, but we need to remember that most trips done by a bike are less than five kilometers, and that can easily be done in the same clothing as you would by walking. So that's the, that's the message we need to send across. Now I'm wearing uh, jeans and a suit, and this is what I wear when I cycle to work or to the store, or wherever I'm going. It's a destination, not the journey. But of course, uh, it should be allowed. If you, someone cycles 15 kilometers, first of all, that's great. And then, it's, of course, it's understandable that in that aspect, you need different gear. But the thing that we they really need to focus on is the, the biggest potential, and that is the, uh, the real utilitarian cycling, where people just really use that like they would use a vacuum cleaner, because it makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Very good points. Thank you. You got other questions or points from the yesterday's discussion? Hello, Marie Kostrup, City of Copenhagen. Um, I also would like to wrap up my impressions from this whole seminar. And uh, for me, what I notice in the bicycle action plan here in Helsinki is that 16% of people consider cycling as safe. 16%. That's not a very high share of, of the population. And, and we saw the figures where we asked people, why don't you cycle? And they, theoretically, they try to uh, find out why don't they cycle, and they give you some reasons, and you can look into those reasons, and it will also make sense. But I think, actually, safety, is, it's a hygiene factor. If, if you're afraid you are going to get into an accident or get killed in traffic, you have to be really idealistic to choose a bike as a mode of transportation. So the perceived safety is really an issue that you need to take really seriously if you want the broad population to cycle more. In Copenhagen, uh, it, has been, uh, it has been increasing the last 20 years, so now we have 79% of citizens saying that they feel safe when they cycle in Copenhagen. And that is, uh, <laughs> that is really crucial, I think. And so, Perceived safety is really linked to the infrastructure quality. I mean, there's no discussion about that. That's sort of the backbone of uh, cycling promotion. It should feel safe to be out there. It seems like your accident stats are okay. Actually, there are not so many serious accidents and deaths here among cyclists, so that's a good thing. But nevertheless, the cyclists don't feel safe out there. We've also heard that the investments are really ambitious, more ambitious than in Copenhagen. We don't invest 20 million euros per year in Copenhagen, so I'm really um, impressed by that. And, uh, and I, it appears also that the ambitions for the quality of infrastructure are quite high. There is a lot of work to be done, but you are doing it really thoroughly, but, uh, but it takes time. And the, the fact that Copenhagen has spent 100 years to improve our infrastructure with best quality uh, solutions should never be a reason for Helsinki to take as long. There is definitely ways to be faster than Copenhagen and Amsterdam. And this is where the idea about the light segregation to, to, to combine you know, the long steady work with the best quality infrastructure, this should not be forgotten or abandoned but it can be combined with faster solutions because you need to as act faster than we have done if you want more people to feel safe. Um, so for me, light segregation, painted lanes, it's not optimal. You should have a plan to make that great, but it can be a temporary solution, not necessarily a pilot, just a planned temporary solution, a first generation uh, solution, which can later be upgraded. And I think, with the investments that you can get from your decision makers and all the good staff, I think you have the, a great potential, but uh, you need to consider a larger toolbox than you have already. Um, and then remember that it doesn't only take investments in the hardware, it's really also the software, the staff, the organizational power to be able to implement the plans that will be needed. But. Uh, I'm so far really impressed by the work done here. Thank you. Thank you. Oscar van der Noord, uh, Willem on the Up Partner in Handshake. Um, this, la this latest debate between uh, Helsinki and uh, Copenhagen, I see as an as a elegant competition. I see some fear in Copenhagen. <laughs> I see some progress in Helsinki. <laughs> and I think that is 
what we just experienced and a compliment both for this approach. I don't probably need the mic, but I can continue from here. Marie, thank you so much for stressing this uh, question of uh, safety, because actually the numbers, like you said, are quite like mm, not impressive, I have to say. Uh, and as the numbers of the problems are low, there, there should be quite a lot of room for improvement. And I think it's super like cultural issue. If you think about what has been on in the media, both in like traditional and social media through a couple of past years dealing with cycling, it has been quite like uh, uh, concentrated into these problems of cycling. And somehow I think this is some something where there is room for uh, campaigning and that kind of work that is probably not that expensive in either. So, so I think that's that's super important thing. Another thing uh, I would like to mention that I didn't see there that much is the role of the uh, uh, housing uh, housing companies and and houses in like how the. Uh, kind of very first, not mile, but meters for the cycling are organized, because those are also places, uh, or that's where the decision is made quite often, especially in the city center area. Do I take my bicycle or do I take a uh, uh, walk or a tram or even uh, like the scooter? Uh, so what would be the way to have this discussion together with the uh, housing organizations uh, and, and uh, how to support people who would have would like to see the cycling uh, to be uh, conditions improved in there because quite typically the board members and so are more like on the uh, side of the parking. I have to say from my own experience as well, after being part of the board of my own house for quite many years, it's not too easy actually. Like, <laughs> like as, as it's very much organized around like the question of how do we pay and, and organize the parking areas for cars, like how the improvement of cycling conditions in this very, very small um, uh, uh, um, area or uh, environment uh, is organized. Some kind of support for that could be one thing. But thank you for the safety issue. You have the, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Marie, for the uh, really good points on what we need to focus on. I really just had to double check the figures because the perception of safety is definitely a thing we need to focus on, and you were right, the, pe the percentage of people who in 2018 perceived cycling as safe was 16%, but 60% perceived it as quite safe. Oh, okay. So, and this is important, so that not most of the people in Helsinki feel that it's really dangerous, but we have a about 20% of people do see that it is dangerous, so there definitely is work to be done on that. And furthermore, Yes, it is a big problem in Helsinki and in our country that cycling is perceived as unsafe. And I'm going to be rather crude here. Uh, way too many traffic safety experts in this country have gone out of their way, not intentionally necessarily, but they've really done a good job at making cycling seem really dangerous. And uh, there's definitely a lot of work to be done to you know, show the facts on how that it's not. It's pretty much just as dangerous as being in a car. So it's a really valid point, but it's not perceived as, as dangerous as that little figure makes it seem. But yes, do not disagree. We need to focus on that. And we're happy to hear all these little homework, all these little bits of homework that we have, because as we know, we have a lot of work to do. And uh, that's why uh, we might, might seem a little impatient <laughs> at times. Thank you very much for the discussion. And now we can actually continue the discussion as uh, Oscar and Henna will come to wrap up the three days of Helsinki Summit 2021 and tell about the next steps within the Handshake project. Please, Henna and Oscar. Mm.